Okay, I just want to take a few seconds of my time to thank Luke, Anastasia, um, Hope, uh, the, the boys and girls, the men and women who put this thing together. Can we please just give them a round of applause? So much work goes into this, and I'm so happy to be here with you today. At the turn of the millennium, I was an actor living in Los Angeles, and I was going nowhere fast. Couldn't get hired to save my life. Audition after audition, headshot after headshot, resume after resume. And I couldn't figure out why I wasn't getting hired. And then all of a sudden, it hit me. Acting class, right? actors take classes. And I'd heard about the virtues of acting class and the networking opportunities. And I took a few acting classes, but there is one in particular that I want to share with you today. It was a class taught by a man named Jeffrey Tambor, a highly respected character actor that most of you may know as the character of George Bluth on Arrested Development. I came to know him as a mentor and a, a terrific acting coach, the only acting coach I've ever heard of who will give you your money back if you don't bring your A-game to class. Part of being a part of Jeffrey's class was that you had to do a monologue to show him that you were serious about what you were doing, and I thought, cool, this is great. And I show up for class, and I'm ready, and I, I step up, and I launch into my monologue. And it was a monologue about my time in the United States Air Force as a member of Tops in Blue. Tops in Blue is a United States Air Force all active duty performing troop tasked by the State Department to perform for the troops in war zones to raise morale. So my job, one of my jobs in the US Air Force was as a comedian, dancer, and actor performing for the troops, doing jokes under the threat of sniper fire. Hope I'm funny. <laughs> um, it was a weird existence. Um, and as you can imagine, this, this, this gig that I had, uh, touring 27 countries every year in 46 states, it was, it was an amazing opportunity. But the homeland meets mash with a little glee sprinkled on top, <laughs> that whole thing, made for some amazing and really hilarious and life-threatening situations. And this, these situations form the bedrock of my monologue, and, and by this time, I'm almost through the monologue, and the, the, the audience is loving it. The audience is full of actors that we'd all recognize from television, and they're cracking up, and I'm going, and Jeffrey stops me. He says, okay, that's great. Next, and I'm like, uh, well, ho ho hold on, did I, did I get in? Because I just knew that I was funny, and that this was the last box I needed to tick on my way to becoming Don Cheadle. So I'm standing there waiting for Jeffrey's response. And I'm like, D did I get in? He goes, well, look, you, you're funny. You're talented. You'll work. You don't need me. Why are you here? And I didn't have an answer. He said, well, he said, look, you have us laughing, but you don't have us feeling anything. You're on stage telling us jokes about why you joined the US Air Force. Tell us why you joined the US Air Force. I said, well. And this, see, now, I have to admit, around this time, I thought, this is a joke, right? Because as an American kid, I knew that everybody who joined the military, everybody I knew who joined the military was running away from something. And I was no different, but I played along. I said, OK, Jeffrey, OK. Look, I joined the Air Force because I was tired. I was tired of being made to stand at attention overnight with a belt at my feet while my dad laid on the couch in front of me waiting for me to move so that he'd hear the buckle and he'd wake up and give me something to cry about. I was tired of being beaten across my bare chest with a dirty fly swatter until my chest was bloody. I was tired of being afraid of my father every moment of my childhood. I was tired of watching my mother and little brother suffer the same fate. So I joined the Air Force. And Jeffrey stepped forward and he goes, you joined the military for a break? <laughs> I said, yeah, I guess I did. I said, as a matter of fact, the night before I left for basic training, the night before I left for boot camp, I found out that the guy who had been abusing me my whole life, the guy that I thought was my dad, wasn't my real dad. 
And my mom swears she told me before. She said, I probably just forgot. <laughs> it was a similar reaction from the acting class. Like, what the? <laughs> and as I watched some of the audience sob, some of them laugh, some of them with their jaw on the ground, it hit me like a ton of bricks. What I learned that day could not have been more clear as to why my career as an actor was going nowhere. And how now that I'd had this experience, I could actually take it somewhere. But we'll come back to that. None of you came here to take acting class, so why do you care? Well, fellow content creators, uh, entrepreneurs and, and, and change makers and thinkers, you know, we're always hit over the head with this notion that content is king. And I'm here to tell you that it's not. Because what I learned that day in Jeffrey's class is that context is king. In the same way that anyone can move to Hollywood and become an actor, the internet has created a democratization of content creation that says that any of us can become a content creator. And it's an intoxicating feeling to think that anyone in this room can be the source of the next big viral video or tweet or whatever. It's intoxicating, but it's misleading because it probably won't happen. As content creators, we we, 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 we create content, and, and everyone can have a blog post. Uh, anyone can have a blog, a, a, tweet, a Twitter account. You can have YouTube videos, a website. And it's this everyone can, but does that mean everyone should sort of situation? And we approach it in the same way that I approached acting. I wanted to tick the boxes. I've got my headshots. I've got my resume. I've got my tight t-shirt, and I'm, you know. <laughs> You know, we, we do that. Uh, you know, I, I'm guilty of the same thing when we create content. We, do I have lots of followers? Check. Do I use the word epic in every Facebook post? Check. <laughs> do I write on my blog weekly whether I have something to say or not? Check. We do what everybody else is doing and wonder why nobody's paying attention. Because with this democratization of content creation, in my opinion, comes a responsibility. If we truly understand that the fact that everyone is doing it makes it that much easier to ignore, then why not bring context into the picture so that we're not just trying to reach everybody? Because at the end of the day, as content creators, as creative souls, as entrepreneurs, we're hoping for an audience, whether the audience means a customer, whether the audience means someone literally sitting and watching us speak, or someone sitting at their computer or laptop, or mobile device engaging with our blog or website. We want an audience. But the sooner we embrace the fact that context can only be found when we understand that the audience isn't looking for content. They're looking for the connection that creates context. Think of context as, who are you? What's possible in your world? What would be missing from your world if you couldn't sit down and write this right now? What would be missing from the world if you didn't contribute this piece of writing you're about to put out there? Never before have we had such an easy access, amazing access for free to people from all walks of life. But never before have we needed to embrace that it's not people from all walks of life that we need to reach. It's people who connect with your story and your story. And there's a lot of talk about story, and it's, storytelling is almost becoming a cliche. What's your story? What's your story? But I really believe that we're the most distracted public in recorded history, and that we're constantly searching online for pieces of ourselves. I really believe that we search for those elusive Me Too moments that validate our, our yearning for connection and empowers us to be able to share things in the same way that we're able to share things and ideas here today. Our failure to embrace the fact that your blog or her blog could not reach everybody, you know, it's, it's not sustainable. You know, it's 
I'm not, and look, I'm not suggesting that everyone should write everything. I'm not suggesting that all of your stories are colored with child abuse. You know, everybody in this room, everyone within the sound of my voice knows that uh, stories come in all shapes, sizes, and colors. But I am suggesting, and I am challenging all of us to stop writing and start caring. Because when we add context, we add connection, and with connection comes conversation. And there's nothing more viral than a small, dedicated audience that wants to spread what you have to say because they connect. We can't find connection in a whole bunch of followers. We can't find connection in, in search engine optimization. Connection is through context. Jeffrey let me stay in his class. And I went on to take other classes. But what I learned there, I was able to, to grow and cultivate in so many wonderful ways. That scene that he had me perform, where I found out the night before I left for basic training, that the guy who had abused me my whole life wasn't my real dad. And my mom swears she told me to this day, she says, I probably just forgot. I had to write another scene each week that attached to this context. I wasn't allowed to get on stage and just be funny and be the next funny black guy, because there's plenty of those. I had to bring the story to the stage, and it stitched itself together through feedback from the actors in the class and from audiences all over the world into a play called Basic Training that has toured the world, won New York Times critics pick, it's set ticket sales records, and it's changed my life. It's how I met my wife. It's how, it's how I was able to have a career that wasn't just full of empty content. Thank you so much for your time. And I challenge you to stop writing and start caring. Take care. <laughs>